Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. I've probably opened more Lich's Masteries in the, the last week than most people. Yeah, I mean there's a Grun in this pack, a Sheevan Fire, and a Vicious Offering as kind of the better cards and I guess Journey Mage too. I think Sheevan Fire usually the preferred pick over Vicious Offering. I think I would take Sheevan Fire over Journey Mage. So it's basically Sheevan Fire versus Grun. Fire is probably still the pick. A little bit more flexible. Goes into the Wizard deck. Splashable as well. So yeah, let's take a Sheevan Fire. Ooh. And Daragaz, you say. Well, Daragaz is pretty good. If you can cast it. Need a bit of fixing, bit of ramp, but it could happen. What else is there in the pack? Tetsuko, Cloud Raider Sphinx are decent too. Probably would take the Sphinx over Tetsuko. So it's Sphinx versus Darigans. Do we want to draft a normal blue-red deck? Or do we want to go a little bit deeper with Darigans? Who am I kidding? All right, I guess we'll take the other six drop now. It's nothing else too exciting. I think I prefer Urgros over Skizik. And now we can maybe black red splash green. Hope to get some skittering surveyors. <laughs> I mean, Torgar's not even that good this is a problem. Unless you're playing a Saproling deck. So I don't think I want it here. I think I prefer the Soothsayer over it. There's also Cyclops, which would be fine. As a good blocker. But Soothsayer is probably the pick. Can help us sacrifice random Saproling tokens from fungal infections. Can help us uh, sacrifice Skin Witches and other random 1-3s that we don't need. Can even save Darigas from exile based removal, technically speaking, if we have enough mana. Just a good card. Alright, now I'm pretty happy with the Cyclops, just have a cheap early blocker that can uh, help us get to the late game. I mean, 4 mana is not super cheap, of course, but better than a Confessor, I think. Don't need another 6-drop, I'll probably take a candle now, even though I'm not super excited about it. A lot of late green cards, but they're not very good. Memorial and Gift of Growth are fine, but typically don't want these other ones. Still looking more like red-black splash green than anything else. Could take a Lava Runner, just as a hopefully 1-mana 2-2. Two -two but currently only have the Sheevan Fire to pump it up, so it's not looking very good. I could take a Warlord Fury just as a cantrip to maybe go with the 1-3 uh, the with Kicker to get it back from the graveyard alongside some removal spells. And having a few cantrips to help us draw the better cards is always useful. Normally, a Lava Runner is pretty decent, but Given our current picks, I don't know how good it's going to end up being. And I don't think we need a Fire Elemental. So let's take a Fury. Really don't want to play a Drudge Sentinel. On the off chance that we're still going to be heavy green, I could take Impulse. I don't think Shield's going to be great here. Our creatures are pretty expensive. And Drudge Sentinel's really mediocre. Alright, maybe take an Envoy in case we need uh, fixing. Could take another Impulse or a Confessor. I mean, I could still be black, green, splash reds. Splash even fire, splash Darigas. Don't play the Cyclops and the Fury, that's totally possible too. In which case, I probably want another Impulse over Scout and Confessor. Sure. If we're gonna splash red, then Goblin's not a great card, but I'm also not playing any of these other cards. So, still not sure 
what exact uh, color combination we are. But uh, yeah, hopefully we get to play Dargas. Nothing really here. All right, so first uh, three picks in that pack, I guess four picks were good. We had a Shivan Fire, then a Darigas, Urgros, and Soothsayer. Everything else is kind of medium, but hopefully we can figure out how we are gonna cast our spells here. Finding Scattering Surveyor pretty high up on our lists for fixing, and if we do end up main green, then maybe a Gift of Growth could also help out. We're not looking at the Mox Amber, but we are looking at Slimefoot, Shivenfire, and Eviscerate. I mean, Slimefoot is the more powerful card, but we might need removal to get to the Darigas. Problem here is that we don't know exactly if we're main black, main red, main green, so that makes it a little tough to decide um, what to pick. Yeah, I mean, Eviscerate is always going to be quite solid, so we can also splash it. Probably to pick over Sheevan Fire when we already have one. Eh, let's take a removal spell. Alright, gotta take the Skittering Surveyor now. As much as I like Deathbloom Salad and Chronicler, we need the mana fixing pretty badly. And then now. I guess Sap Herd is the only consideration. Don't think we're gonna need a Jousting Lance. This is not a Champion of the Flame deck, so the only card I would remotely consider here is the Sap Herd, although don't even know if green is gonna be one of our main colors. It might be. So two considerations here, Garna and Omnivore. Omnivore plays well with the Sap Herd we just picked up. Can sacrifice Surveyor pretty easily. Not many other tokens. And we already have a Soothsayer to sacrifice the, the same stuff. So Garna seems decent. If we have a lot of mana, we can even combo Soothsayer with Garna to get a ton of value. And then we would end up with three legendaries in case we pick up some of those legendary sorceries. I don't think Wild Onslaught is going to be amazing in our deck, but we might pick up some more Sap Herds and random token makers and then the Onslaught becomes a lot better. And there's nothing else I really want here. So might as well. Yeah, don't say the Dark Bargain for some card draw can help us find those powerful cards as well. Do need to pick up some good 2-drops, but I haven't seen any good ones that we were able to take. Lanor Scout is pretty mediocre. Am I interested in a Journey Mage? So at this point we kind of need to figure out what our situation is. It looks more like Black Green Splash Red to me. Where we just splash Sheevan Fire. And now we're just not playing these. And then we get to play Impulse to help find Darigas or Gross and the other good cards. A reasonable amount of interaction with Shivan Fire Candle Eviscerate. But of course would like a bit more. So definitely need to work on the early parts of our curve. So I don't think Journey Mage is going to be necessary. Memorial could always be fine. Or I could take the Scout anyway, just have a 2 mana 1-3 that sometimes puts a land in play. And can pick up a counter with Onslaught and I can sacrifice to Soothsayer. But we can hopefully pick up random 1-3s later anyway. So I'll take a Memorial. With a Memorial in the mana base, playing 18 lands is also less uh, of a bad thing. Probably take another Envoy. I mean, Paladin could be decent too with three cards that trigger it at the top end. We've got Surveyor Candle, so we've got a few ways to trigger it. But I might need to lower the curve here and take Envoy. Although, there's so many good 3-drops we could pick up still with the Sap Herd and the... the other Thalad at 3 mana that I would much prefer, not a Surveyor of course. So the 3-drop creatures might end up being pretty crowded, as opposed to the 4-drops where I don't have much going on. So maybe we'll try the Paladin here. Uh, nothing here. 
Yeah, Crows and Druid's fine too. Alright, last pack. Hopefully we get some goodies. Yeah, this pack is good. It's got a lot of goodies. Of course, Helm of the Hosts is super strong if we can get to it. it. Requires some setup. We don't have the best early game to kind of protect our life total and set up the board to fully leverage Helm. But if it does stick around, then uh, it's an easy way to win the late game. So probably still gotta take it. Untamed Kaufu would have been nice. Another Sappert to go with the suits there, and the Wild Onslaught would be great, and a Skin Witch as an early creature that we can kick late. So a lot of good cards, hopefully we wheel something out of this, but we'll stick to the helm. Alright, now I gotta take the Sappert as a nice early creature. Shalai is great too, but we're already splashing red, I don't think we can afford to splash white as well for Shalai. And I think our reds is still going to end up being better than just splashing white for Shalai. So sap herd it is. Ooh, nice. Lunar Elves should be great. Got a lot of uh, expensive cards. So the extra ramp is useful. We are green as one of our main colors, so we should be able to play it. Spore Swarm would have been maybe okay too with Onslaught and Suits here in the deck. There's another Dark Bargain, another Crozen Druid, some decent cards. But uh, I think I like the Elf here. Yeah, Helm of the Host plus Shalai is a pretty neat combo, but I think we'll be fine even without that. This pack has absolutely nothing. Don't think we're going to need the wall. But I don't think this deck benefits from uh, Arbor Armaments either, or Demonic Vigor. I guess we don't have any Soul Salvages, so we don't have any Graveyard Recursion outside of, I guess, Garna which is a bit conditional. So our late game does mostly rely on Helm of the Host at this point and Darigas, hoping it doesn't get exiled. Don't have much in the way of removal, but now with uh, the Sap Herds we've got some good early board presence creatures as well. I guess Demonic Vigor is kind of a combo with uh, Soothsayer if we can sacrifice our own stuff. I very highly doubt we'll play it, but you never know. Ooh, now we're all, all the good cards in the same pack. Don't think we're going to need a second Onslaught, so we can easily exclude that one. Suitsir is great, but of course has some diminishing returns. So I think we're mostly looking at Skin Witch and Grow. Skin Witch would give us a good 2-drop, which we're lacking. And can kick it late. Can be sacrificed to the Suitsir. So that would be a nice pickup. Grow would give us a nice ramp spell. Which would help with Urgros, Darigas and the Helm of the Hosts. We started out with a lot of expensive cards, but at the end, it's not like we've got an insanely high curve. The fixing from Grow is nice, but I don't need a ton of ramp. So I think the Skin Witch might just be better, just to give us the option of playing a 2-mana 1-3, and for 6-mana Skin Witch is still quite good too. It's definitely close. Had we seen this pick earlier in the draft, we probably would have taken Grow from the Ashes. But I think the way our deck ended up, we're going to probably benefit more from Skin Witch. We can also find it with Impulse, which is also not irrelevant. Whereas Grow we can't find. Yeah, let's take a Skin Witch. Alright, now we can take the Grow over Garna number 2. I guess it's reasonable. I mean, second Garna is still fine. But now I think Grow is probably a better fit for the deck. Especially now with Skin Witch also virtually being a 6-drop. Could use a bit more ramp. And yeah, I'm not gonna say no to a Mammoth Spider. We're a bit soft to flying creatures. Don't have much removal. So Spider seems like a perfect fit. And I might play an Ancient Animus. We've got a few legendary creatures that can fight and pick up a plus one counter. Didn't think we need another Envoy. And don't need anything here. I doubt we'll need another Paladin. Probably not gonna play the Evangel. I think this is pretty much our deck laid in front of us. Mm, 
All right, so this is our removal. We've got not much going on early, kind of setting up with impulse and uh, lunar elves. We've got grow and surveyor for fixing. And then some decent top ends, but mostly Helm of the Host is going to do some heavy lifting, hopefully. Did not see a soul salvage we could take, sadly. Had to give up on a slime foot to take that eviscerate, which ended up being one of our few removal spells. So yeah, our deck definitely has some issues, but it can definitely win some games if we get to cast a Dargas or a Helm of the Host and kind of take over that way. I guess 17 lands is fine when we have Grow and Surveyor, don't need to play more. So I think this is our deck. I could play Gaia's Blessing as a way to shuffle back some good cards in my deck if I think the game's gonna go long. And we're not doing much on turn 2, so we can just cycle it if we're not doing anything. So I'm kind of considering the Gaia's Blessing if we fear that we might not be able to close out the game otherwise. But usually, if Helm of the Host uh, sticks, we can figure out a way to win. Got a few good kicker cards with Crows and Druid, Skin Witch, Grow from the Ashes, Onslaught. So we can spend a decent chunk of mana in the late game. So don't necessarily want to cut any of the mana related cards. Probably need Candle to have some more interaction. Yeah, I don't think I'll need Gaia's Blessing. Yeah, yeah, Animus doesn't need a legendary creature. It's, it's an instant speed prey upon. But if it is legendary, it just gets a plus one counter as well but it doesn't have to be. And then I guess we'll need to figure out a mana base. We only have three red cards. I have Surveyor and Ashes for fixing. So I think we can get away with two mountains. It's pretty even split between black and green, favoring green slightly for these early cards. So... Can go eight green, seven black. I guess six black, nine green could also be fine. Since basically all our early game is green up until turn 4, where we have black cards. So probably going a 9-6 on that split, and then we've got a Memorial 2, which can dig for Darigas and the other Curved Toppers. Yeah, seems fine. And double Dragon. Yeah, we could double some Dragons with Helm of the Host. All right, I uh, think we gotta keep this. We're on the draw, just gotta draw a third land and then Surveyor gives us land four. And we're off to the races, Suitsir can sacrifice Surveyor. I guess we can play Envoy first to trade off. Don't really need it for fixing. Opponent splashing blue, so they could have Muldrotha. Yeah, maybe I'll play Suitsayer now and then next turn I can go Surveyor. Get a land, maybe play Skin Witch as well, but probably not. Yeah, I don't think we'll need to Skin Witch. Got the ability on suits here available. So I could just chump with Surveyor and sacrifice it. It's probably okay. Since I'm gonna be busy spending my mana in the next couple turns. Ah, they've got their own skin witch. We'll return the favor. Onslaught doesn't look great here since we're not going wide. So Paladin and Onslaught probably go. We'll start with our own Skin Witch. We 
Ooh, clutches. That was a pretty clutch. And hopefully next turn slam there, I guess. Pretty epic animation. And that does it, sweet. Traded off some resources, they skin -witched us, we skin -witched them. Slammed our gas, game over. Alright, um, this is missing black mana. I don't think I can keep. This is much better. I think I bought him the Envoy. Like, sure, I can play turn two, but are we really all that excited about turn two Envoy? Might need a candle as removal. I mean, could also bottom the candle, that's the other option. But uh, I think we're hoping that the impulse can find us a good three or four mana play. And then we'll have candle as a bit of interaction. So, Impulse, Surveyor, or Urgoros. This is close. Urgoros is a threat, so we're putting Helm on the bottom, so we won't have a ton of threats left. But I guess we get to shuffle with Surveyor if we take it, so it's not that important. And then Surveyor can find red mana. And we also need 6 mana before we can use a candle, so... I think I'll take Surveyor. Probably fine to play Candle out. Don't think we need to hold it as a surprise necessarily. So we've got all three of our removal spells basically in hand. I guess Ancient Animus, another one. But now we need to find something to win the game with. Not gonna kill the Scholar, I'll take two. I mean, I could kick Sheev and fire the Scholar now. Since we still have Candle and Eviscerate, and I don't know when I'll be able to find an answer to the Scholar. But it also feels kinda weak. But then again, the blue-red deck is not particularly known for a lot of large creatures. It's more a deck trying to tempo us out and play lots of cheap spells and card draw effects. So it's not like these removal spells are necessarily gonna snipe some big creature. Maybe a, a Cloud Reader Sphinx, but then we still have two answers left over. So I guess it's fine. Alright, Wild Onslaught's not bad. This is 8 mana kicked, so we're still a little bit short. Can sacrifice Candle end of turn. Of course, the fact that we have Candle in play means that they'll definitely be playing out their worst creatures first. So they're maybe considering between playing a Sphinx or playing something else, or a card draw effect like they're gonna do now. So, weight of memory first. No real point in using the Onslaught yet, I don't think. Well, that's a good draw. If we can equip the Surveyor and get a land every turn, that's kind of nice too. But now that Helm is in play, unless they have the 5 mana Fire Intervention to destroy artifacts, or a Bound spell and then a Counter spell, there's not a ton of ways for them to get rid of it. So just gotta hope to draw creatures that we can keep equipping. Alright, there's Atlas. 
and a frenzied rage on the servants, so two threats we have to contend with now. Alright, so... Five, six mana. They could technically sell the Blink of an Eye up, thanks to the Arcanists. Can only do one thing this turn, sadly. Even if we could observe and get a land. I could use Hellman and chump with the token, although this has menace, so it's kinda difficult to effectively chump block. But I would like to get the helm going. So maybe it's still the play. Hoping they don't have a blink. I mean, I could always chump with Alf. Journey Mage is gonna bounce Surveyor. Or the token, I guess it works too. Maybe they have another answer for Surveyor. So you can't really afford to chump. A little surprised I didn't bounce the actual Surveyor to make me replay and re-equip. Don't mind getting more lands. Alright, so we've got five, six, seven, eight mana total. So this is probably turn where we want to eviscerate plus play something else. Now Adelis is probably the scarier card. Since I have a couple wizards, we can maybe chum block the servant and trade off or just trade. So let's I guess we want to start with the non-eviscerate card, in case they counter it. They probably have a counter spell up, although if it's syncopate, then we don't want to be tapped low when we eviscerate. So maybe I eviscerate first anyway, and hope that it's syncopate and not wizard's retorts. Alright, no response whatsoever. And then, yeah, I probably play Paladin. Fly to Journey Mage, okay. So now the plan is to trade off for the Servants. And then next turn use Candle and Journey Mage. Run amok. So we're at two. Alright, so definitely need to candle Journey Mage. Five, six. Leaves me three mana. I guess we can play Envoy too then. And then we can candle the Journey Mage, hopefully not die. Probably should have candled before they got a chance to attack here. Yeah, that was a mistake. Because now they could run amok and save it. Although run amok on Servant still would have been pretty bad. And yeah, that's another problem. Well, needs Urgoros or Darigas, there's Urgoros. Alright, so we're still in it. I mean, ideally we would start copying Urgoros with Helm. Six, but uh, don't have enough mana for that. So it's probably just get a land, play Urgoros and pass. At least we're doing a good job of thinning out our deck. Probably could have tapped slightly differently there, but... I don't necessarily expect to cast Wild Onslaught, but... It's probably more relevant in casting a Guru. 
opponent passes, that's great for me, because now I get to put my helm on Urgoros. Don't know if I'm quite confident enough to attack here. Seems a bit risky still. We'll just chill and then next turn we can make an attack with the kicked onslaughts. And then I guess I can kick this grow now. So we don't have many lands left in our deck. Syncopate maybe. Sure. Don't really care too much. Ooh, kicked Chronicler. Did have a burn spell to get back. Run amok. Blink can bounce a token. Sad we attacked, we would have died. Run amok is seven, so I'm not dead to the run amok. But it's not good for me. Yeah, I guess we don't have Urgros anymore. I mean, we're still in reasonable shape. We don't have many lands left. I can stack Memorial to go digging, or I can just kick this Onslaught and try and win with the stuff we have in play. But I feel like I'm better off just sacking Memorial here, dig for Daragas. Mammoth Spider seems better than Garden because they find more flyers. And then we'll just play Spider. And then no Helm of the Host equip this turn, that's fine. Could have also equipped Helm and then next turn played Spider, but if they top deck a counter spell, maybe that's bad. Pretty happy if we can make a couple spiders here. And then I'm one mana short of kicking onslaughts. No great attacks at the moment, but next turn we can definitely attack. Explorer, sure. 15 cards versus 14, so they could mill first. Sadly, there goes Darigas. But we should be able to win with Helm. Suitsayer is also not bad. Could basically draw my entire deck now. But I think the plan is just uh, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we should have enough for Suitsayer and Kicked Onslaughts. Just double checking. 7, 8, that should work. I guess I could play around Syncopate by just going Onslaught and not Suitsayer. But this way we get an extra counter on the Suitsayer. Alright, no response, I don't think they have anything. Alright, so how aggressive do we get? We are still at one life, so we do want to be a little bit careful. But I guess these can attack. And maybe these leave back five blockers. Although this has menace. Yeah, let's just attack with two spiders, I think. If I attack with everyone, I don't think we'll necessarily have lethal. Alright, so we'll put this one first. Uh, and next turn we should be able to attack for lethal. Oof, that was a close game. Needed to top deck that Urgoros to have a flying blocker. We did. Other outs would have been Mammoth Spider, Darigas, but we didn't have many. And then, yeah, opponent did not attack with a Drake. Which seemed like a mistake, because that meant we could copy Urgoros, but then they did find a Chronicler for the Runamok. Glad we didn't attack with Urgoros. And uh, yeah, Helm kind of carried the victory from there. 
at one life. Couldn't be any closer. Uh, sure. I'm never too sad when we see a compass on the other side. Alright, so I could play Grow, which sets up Garna next turn, which could ambush the Honor Guard if it doesn't get pumped. Or I could just play Crozen Druid now and then maybe wait until we kick Grow from the Ashes, but it's not like I need a ton of mana if I play Crozen Druid, because then my Kicker card's gone. So, I think I prefer to Grow, get my Reds, and then keep Crozen Druid as a late game card. Ooh, Black Blade Reforged. Seven mana to equip a regular creature. But it probably implies they have some legendary creatures in their deck. Alright, let's see if we can maybe ambush the Honor Guard here. Pretty sure the Navigator's Compass always holds priority, so we can't read too much into pauses from the opponent. On Sarah's Wings. Alright, I think that still works out. So now it's legendary, so they could equip it for three with the, the Black Blade, but now we can go Garna into Animus. But I guess this also got an extra plus one, since it counts itself as a legendary. So it will just be a trade of Garna for the Honor Guards, but I guess it's reasonable. Of course, hoping to top deck Eviscerate or Shivenfire. Cabal Paladin instead. So yeah, the Ancient Animus would put a counter on Garna, but they would still trade. I don't think we can afford to let this Honor Guard get out of hand, so I'm probably just gonna Ancient Animus now to prevent any pump spells from the opponents. I could wait until they try and equip the Black Blades. That's kind of a, a reason to wait here. But what if they just attack with Honor Guards and don't equip and play something else and have a pump spell in hand, then I get punished. Can definitely attack first. But then we're probably gonna Ancient Animus. Alright, I guess we had enough mana to do both. So yeah, that was a mistake. Definitely should have played Paladin and attacked with the Paladin as well. Since we're gonna do both. Still gonna play it here. I mean, I could also... Fight with the Paladin, I guess, instead of Garna. Since we drew the Paladin. In which case, I should have definitely attacked first with it too. So we missed out on... Uh, for damage. I mean, what's better here? Paladin or Garna? That's kind of close. Do have a couple more historic spells in the deck. Giving future things haste can matter, although Daragas automatically has haste. Can't say for sure. Think I'll keep Garna. I mean, Point also gains four life here in the fight, so they're gonna be a 28. So. Don't know how much for life is going to matter in the grand scheme of things, but definitely should have attacked first. Ooh, Helm. That's a great draw. I mean, it's also possible that I shouldn't attack with Garna in case they have a Gideon's Reproach. And just play Helm and pass. Because, again, how much does 3 damage matter in this spot? Whereas if they have a and get into approach, I would be pretty sad losing my creature that I want to equip next turn. I think that's okay. Spore Swarm instead, also would have ambushed Garna. Ooh, Party Quander. Alright, I mean... Black Blade is going to be scary on the Trampler. So 
So I could kick Crows and Druids, but I probably want to equip Helm first. Although, let's see, this gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. Yeah, that could be plus seven, plus seven, but I think we still do this. And then hold Crows and Druid to kick it next turn. So hopefully they don't have land 7. They have land 7. So 12, 12, trample. Yeah, I'm gonna have to chump. Don't have many outs to this uh, Black Blade. Darigas. If we had enough mana to play Darigas and equip, we could make some progress. I guess I could play Darigas and just stay back. We get another Garna. And then I can triple block the Wanderer. And trade off. And then what happens? They can attack with everyone. I triple block Wanderer, go to one, play Kick Throws and Druids. And then I can take a hit from the Black Blades before I start equipping, and then I can chump forever. That's maybe better than just playing a Kick Throws and Druid here. And then in a couple turns, Darigaz is gonna come back. But yeah, if they have any interaction, we're super dead. Alright, so we can still survive here. But we would go to one. But if they just pass a turn, I think that favors us with the Helm in play. Copy Darigas might be better. Of course, if they have, like, another Spore Swarm or something, that could be bad. Points in green-white, so they're not necessarily gonna have burn spells to kill me here. And if they had a removal spell in hand, they would have used it last turn. But, uh... Don't think I'll be attacking. Alright. So far, so good. <laughs> well, I guess that's not too relevant. Triple block's not good enough. So I guess I just block with the two Darigazes. Points empty handed, so. Alright, Helm versus Black Blade. I mean, if their creature doesn't have Trample or some form of evasion, we can just chum block forever. And eventually Darigas will come back. So now I think I like Sap Herd, copy Sap Herd. Make a million tokens. And this is going to get out of hand pretty quickly. There's no trample combo tricks in green-white that I'm aware of. So yeah, they're just going to have to stay back and eventually Darigas will kill them. Now we'll finally kick this Crows and Druids. Probably still not attacking. And there's Darigas. Yeah, let's just make some Darigases. Don't have double black to kick the skin witch somehow. Ooh, pierce the sky. That's unfortunate. They should have waited until the helm actually equipped, because now it's still on the sap herd. I guess it doesn't matter too much since we had the mana to move it anyway. What if we now equip Garna? Does that work? And I guess not, because Darigaz is exiled, so it doesn't return to hand. All 
All right, just gotta avoid flying creatures here, and then we should be good. Sheevan fire, not quite enough to kill the ooze. All right, at what point do we start attacking? Is it now? Yeah. And then we'll keep back these. And a token. Sure. And our opponent packs it in. Well, that game was close. Black Blade Reforged versus Helm of the Host. This hand has a lot of potential. We have, I think, nine green sources in the deck total, so we're pretty likely to find one. Of course, having one turn one for the elf is great, but even if we find it turn two, turn three, it's still okay. And we need any third land for Surveyor to find green, so... We'll try it. Can always play Skin Witch as an early blocker if we have to. Alright, so probably Surveyor here, plus Impulse. Surveying first makes it a bit less likely that we find a land with the Impulse, I guess. Yeah, we'll get greedy. I mean, I can kick Grow next turn to have a lot of mana, and then we just need the Curve Toppers. All right, Quende plus uh, Sarah Disciples, a scary combination. Spider's a decent blocker here. Probably got to play that before we kick uh, Grow from the Ashes. All right, that's fine. So they don't have a good attack. Perfect. Can play Urgros. Or I can kick Skin Witch, but they still have four cards in hand. If I go kick Grow from the Ashes, I don't have enough mana to do anything else. So hoping they double spell so the Skin Witch can get their last two cards. No attacks. Maybe a Giddens Reproach that they're planning to use on Urgoros or some other way to get rid of it. Uh, now I can kick the Grow plus Sap Herds. I wouldn't be able to attack because I can't pay the Baird tax. Don't really need double rat, but I guess it's fine. And then next turn we can maybe jam Darigas or play the Skin Witch first, we'll see. Plenty of food for the suits there. Alright, Blessed Light, perfect. So this is kind of the ideal answer to get rid of a Darigas, as it exiles it so it can come back. So getting that out of the way is a pretty good deal. Mm, this could be a kick Cheevan Fire, which would kill Spider and not kill the Disciple. But if their entire turn is kick Cheevan Fire, we can Skin Witch, get their last two cards, and then Daraga should win the game. So I think we're happy with that trade. Right, it's an Adamant Will instead. I guess it has double strike thanks to Quende, so still kill the Spider there. Kelvin Raider discards a charge. Alright, I mean, that works for me. 
So now it's Dargast time, or we could Skin Witch to get one card, but it's a random card. So it could be a land. I think it's Dargast time, and we can pay the bear tax and attack. I guess we leave ourselves a little bit vulnerable on the way back, but next turn we can play Kate Crows and Druid to make up for it. Or I could just leave Dargast back as a blocker for a turn. We are taking a decent chunk of damage on the way back, I guess. Ideally, what I would like to set up is Soothsayer in play and then play Darigas with two mana so we can sack it in response to another Blessed Light, but I don't think that's going to be feasible here. So play it safe for a turn, keep Darigas on defense. And hopefully no Blessed Lights. That's fine. Candle. Alright, so now I can play Suits there. Let's say they have a seal away, I can sacrifice Darigaz in response. But now I think I do attack. Because I can also chump with a creature and then sacrifice it to the Suits there. Could have played Candle too there, I suppose. Opponent sends everyone. Alright, hopefully they didn't pick up another charge. These could bounce off each other. And then I guess I want to block Quende, since that could deal the most amount of damage if they do have a pump effect. Also, if it's a trample pump spell, then it doesn't matter. But I guess I want to double block Kelden Raider. So I could do that, or I guess maybe better, or like this, and then Chump Quende, sacrifice it, and then trade there. And then we're only taking three, four, five. Sure. Adamant Will, the Unicorn. So we're going to lose a Soothsayer. What do we sacrifice? If I sack the Soothsayer itself, they don't gain the life from the Unicorn. It's probably the play here. Alright, so definitely going to play Kicked Crows and Druids. Uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then I can't afford to attack because we can't pay the tax, but that's fine. Alternatively, I can play Candle to get rid of Quende, which removes a lot of damage they have. But then I'll probably stay back with Darigas for a turn. I want to wait until beginning of combat in case I have another Quende in hand. And they probably don't have a way to make this survive minus 5, minus 5 anyway. Still have the flexibility of casting Dark Bargain too. Interesting. That was questionable. Cardinal's great. So now it's probably a good time for a kick Crows and Druids. Just to be safe. And then next turn we'll start attacking. Shall is not bad, but they don't have green mana, so they won't be able to pump their creatures at least. And we can Sheevan fire it now too. Could have played it even safer by maybe skin witching their hands before attacking in case of a seal away. But uh, that's going to do it. All right. This seems fine. So 
So this looks like a grindy black red mid range deck. Usually a color with a lot of removal in it. Don't have any soul salvagers. But we do have a Dari Gas, which they might struggle to kill repeatedly. Although Settle the Score can exile it, so that's something we don't want to see. Or try to bait out first. Seems like a reasonable Dark Bargain turn, or I can just play Envoy. Probably gonna see Sheev and Fire end of turn, or maybe their own Dark Bargain. Nothing. Hmm. They might be missing a color, maybe. Helm's definitely a great draw. They could maybe kill it with a um, Fiery Intervention, but that's about it. Yeah, they do have a Gar now. I guess that was kind of to be expected. Gets to ambush the sap herd. Could have only attacked with Envoy, would have been reasonable. Probably play Helm. Yeah, they were pretty likely to have a Garna there, given that they didn't do anything so far. So probably only should have attacked with Envoy. Ooh. And yeah, Fire Intervention, that's the one answer to... Helm of the Host, but there's Darigas to the rescue. Could also kick the Grow and not play the land in case of a kicked Skin Witch next turn, which they're somewhat likely to have as well. And then I can discard land Crozen Druid maybe. Alright, get Chronicler, get back. Fair Intervention, sure. It's Darigas time. Although we did just draw the Suitsayer, so I could play around Settle the Score by playing Suitsayer first, but my opponent's at 9, so I could put them to 2 here. Doesn't take much to kill them from 2 life. So I feel like I just want to do that instead of play around Settle. Because, yeah, if I play Suitsayer, they could also just kill that instead, and then I don't really make any progress. And Envoy could attack. So hopefully no settle. Torgar, I see. Put their own life total back to 10. That's fair. Alright, so what are we doing? Attack for sure, but then... Um, Five, six, seven, eight. Can play kicked crows and roots. Can go digging with impulse. Can dark bargain. Paladin. All right, that can also burn them out. But I think this turn I like suits here. That insulates me against a potential settle to score. And if they're playing next turn, is kicked skin, which they're dead. So I think I'm okay playing out land now. And then I can chum block with the Sapperling as well, maybe on Torgar and sacrifice it, we'll see. Gotta watch out for Kicked's Fight with Fire, I guess. 5, 7, 8, 9, they have enough mana for that. Alright, sweet. Darigas claims another victim. The Helm got answered, but Darigas was not...
and looks fine. Ooh, Helm and Darigas. I mean, we do have two shuffle effects, Grow from the Ashes and Scattering Surveyor, so they will eventually come back. Probably thinking Mountain for now. Be disciplined. So blue-black control. So this is probably a deck that tries to win with Coldwater Snapper or some other bomb. Which we won't be able to eviscerate. That's fine. I would prefer to play Stutzair if we have the mana to sacrifice in response to removal. Which would mean doing nothing this turn or playing a Druid Unkicked. Gotta watch out for opposing skin witches as well. Maybe just play Crows and Druid Unkicked. Don't know how much life is gonna matter in this game. It's mostly also that emptying my hands could both be good or bad. If we can empty your hand before skin witch, that's great. But if I'm like left with one or two good cards, by the time skin witch happens, we're gonna be sad. Opponent is stuck on four lands, so that's noteworthy. So I guess now we can attack and probably play suits here. This might get countered as well. All right, mono counter spells. Five mana. We know they probably have all action in hand. So if we want to play around Skin Witch the most, we would play Elf and an Eviscerate Confessor, and then we'll have Candle for the next threat. Seems like they have another Wizard's Retort in hand, maybe. Can pay for Syncopate at least. I'm fine if they want to counter this. Eh, so we don't have much going on. But our mana's established. Tricks are tapping the elf is kinda strange. I guess they had a removal spell for the druid, fair enough. Ooh, Garna. It's a good one. Probably gonna pass now. Could main face play Garna, but we might get a nice ambush out of it. Settle Garna, sure. Opponent's down to one card. So, don't hate our spots. But if a snapper shows up here, we could be in a bit of trouble. Time of Ice instead. Sure. Snapper getting bounced is actually a good thing. Didn't think I'm gonna candle the trickster, but it's gonna put us to four here. Ooh, right of Bells and Lock. And Candle is only minus five, minus five, so it doesn't kill the token.
Dark Bargain. Well, if we Dark Bargain, we could be that to the Trickster if they remove the Elf. But I probably still go for it. And I could also draw into a removal spell. Or a creature. Okay, two removal spells. Probably take both, and then... I would prefer to use Sheevan Fire in combination with Candle to take out the 6-6. Six, six. But that means I need to Ancient Animus the Trickster, killing my own Sapherd, which is kinda bad. I guess I could also Animus plus Candle to kill the Demon, sacking or finding with a random token. So maybe that's still fine. And then for now we'll just achieve and fire now in case they draw a counterspell. So I don't have to jump with elves. Ergoros is pretty good. Opponent does have two cards in hand now though. If I play Sapherds next turn, I could Sack Candle and Animus. But I guess I can still do the same with Urgoros, since this will shrink down the Demon to a 1 1, and then the fight doesn't kill Urgoros, also puts a counter on it. But if we expect our creature to be removed, it could be better to play the Sapherd first. So we still have something to fight with, but I guess I can, as a fail case, always fight with Elves as well. So, I guess this is fine. Because if they interact with the fight, things could get ugly. That's why the Sheevan Fire was a little bit safer of a removal spell to keep. Well, that's pretty good, although... If I kick Skin Witch, then I don't necessarily get to kill the demon, so can't really afford to play it here. So I could attack. Opponent probably takes it, because if they block I can candle. The problem here is if let's say they do have instant speeds removal for Urgoros or like a bounce effect. If I attack, they block I candle, they shrink the one one they bounce it, then they still have their demon and I'm dead next turn, whereas if I do it in their turn, this would shrink down to a 1-1. One, one. If I take one, I'm still not dead. But I probably gotta hope they don't have interaction, otherwise we're probably gonna lose to the demon anyway. So might as well attack. Opponent takes it. So they have to randomly discard now. Alright, so I'm assuming they just have lands in hand. I did lose out on one damage, but... It's probably fine. Could have also waited until their upkeep, so they had to sacrifice uh, an 01 token. I guess there was no downside to doing it in their upkeep there. Yeah, because if they had something, they would have cast it, but we could do it before their draw step. So they should have had one fewer cleric token, I guess. Yeah, the one damage could definitely matter since they're at 11, which is not a tutor on clock with Urgoros. But I think letting the damage happen in case it did have something in hand to maybe let them randomly discard could have been worth it, not sure. Like, let's say they had a counter spell in hand, then we could randomly make him discard it and then the Ancient Animus resolves. So I don't think that was necessarily a mistake, but uh, definitely should have waited until upkeep to make the Animus uh, candle play. On the play... Yeah, this seems uh, reasonable enough. Hoping to find like a scattering surveyor with this impulse. Well, there's a Surveyor.
So facing a pretty nice uh, blue-white beatdown deck here. Do we hold the Crows and Druids a question? I mean, it's not like it blocks the Corsair. Spider can hopefully hope to block, but then the Candle can get rid of it, but then we have Urgros as well. So this Druid's not doing a whole lot for me. Other than attacking on the ground, but I don't think that's, that's what this game is all about. Might need the life gain later. Alright, everything flies. Ooh, Black Blade Reforged. Well, we faced that one before. Not an easy card to beat. Well, let's hope the Spider can hold for a while here. At least until they use a the candle. And then Urgros can maybe try and block next, but uh, eventually Black Blade is gonna be the decider, so we'll have to find Helm of the Host maybe to copy Urgros. Don't have another way of getting rid of the Black Blade. If my opponent passes with the plan of using Candle and Spider next turn, I can just keep up Garna to get Spider back. That seems better than playing Urgros. So let's do that. Another Unicorn instead. Downside of them not hitting their land drop is that I kind of wasted my turn now. But of course we couldn't know that they weren't gonna have land 6. Could still play Garna anyway. And then play Urgoros attack and then they can either lose a card or trade for Unicorn. If I do nothing here, untap, again pass a turn. But of course we're also giving them more time to get to the Black Blades mana. Let's try this. Uh, did a counter spell anyway, so I guess it worked out. So yeah, I guess now we'll play Urgoros, and then they might kill Urgoros instead of Spider, but then they can't attack me for a while until they get to 7. Another candle, alright. Suitsayer could be good. So I guess Urgoros attacks, and if it trades, could be a good thing. I guess I want to play Soothsayer first, in case of like a Seal Away or Gideon's Reproach. So let's see, 5 mana for Kick Grow from the Ashes, get 2 lands, but then I don't have enough mana to play Soothsayer and Sacrifice. So I probably want to just play Soothsayer. I could play an Unkicked Growth, but I probably want to kick it just to thin out the deck a bit more. Because, yeah, trading off for their creatures when they have a Black Blade is kind of a good thing. But, of course, every single creature is going to be a threat. And I'll probably sacrifice the Surveyor to find more action. Shaven Fire is good, so now I can respond to them equipping the Sword. They're not going to equip next turn, so I don't have to keep up Sheevan Fire right now, but next turn I probably will. So this seems like a good turn for Kicked Grow from the Ashes. And then I can play Paladin and pass, or I can keep up Kicked Sheevan Fire. Probably Paladin and pass. Yeah, I guess never mind. Maybe playing Paladin was bad since I could have drawn a card here. But we also want to start pressuring them a little bit. That's okay. I think I want to wait with the Sheevan Fire until they equip. Like, I could kill the Unicorn now and try and race. Hope they don't hit a land for a while. But as soon as they equip, we're going to take. A giant beating, even with Crozendroid getting 10. I don't know if we can raise that, so I'll probably let this happen. Yeah, definitely need to draw our Darigas now. So now the issue is 
if I play Kick Crows and Druids, then I won't have the mana for Kick Cheevan Fire, which I need if they equip the Pegasus Courser. If they equip Unicorn, we're fine. But if they play around Cheevan Fire exactly, then we kind of get punished. So 9, 10, 11 mana. This is 8 total, leaves me 3. So even with the land next turn I wouldn't be able to do it. So maybe the play is to just kick this, hope they don't equip the Courser. Or that they don't draw the land. And then we still have a Soothsayer activation up as well. Another Unicorn. Of course, they do still get to attack me with a flying unicorn, which is annoying. But... So it goes. Elf I can sacrifice. Eviscerate. Alright, that's useful. So now I can eviscerate the Courser. And still have Sheevan Fire at instant speed for if they equip a Unicorn. I think I'm okay trading Paladin for Unicorn, since I just want to get rid of every single creature they have. Maybe I should attack with the Suits there. It's worse if they have a Gideon's Reproach, I guess, in hand, but I don't think they have one from the way they've been playing. So that's fine. Because, yeah, we're not beating the the sword in a long game, so the only way we beat it is if they don't have any creatures to equip, or if we eventually find Helm and a flying creature, but... Or I guess if they don't have any flyers, a ground creature will do as well. This way we leave the Crows and Druid back, so if they have a pump spell, we can sacrifice Druid instead of having to sacrifice the Soothsayer itself. Right, and they're gonna attempt to take out Soothsayer. So I could draw a card by sacking the Druids. Don't know if that's worth it, because if I find Helm with no creatures, that's bad. Probably just sack Soothsayer itself. Alright, don't have many lands left. So Helm and Darigas, those are kind of the only relevant cards in the deck. Opponent's been missing land drops, so they have all action in hand as well. So they could have counter spells for my Helm. Even Sentry. I mean, I want to hold this Sheevan Fire for when they equip, but... We're also eventually going to die to their other things. Skin, which was actually a decent draw. What were you holding, opponents? Conjecture and Elephant. Yeah, Elephant plus Candle's nice. Conjecture could get back a retort. Suppose I could have attacked with the Crozen Druid, since we have Skin Witch to block Unicorn, but then they also gain two. So kind of doesn't make a difference. Wow, Zahid too. That one doesn't die to the Sheevan Fire Kicked. Yeah, don't have any answers for that in my deck other than Darigas blocking. So my next two draw steps basically have to be Darigas and Helm of the Host. I don't see another way we win. And if that's the case... I mean, I can probably still hold the Sheevan Fire. In case they do equip and that maybe buys me a turn. Yeah, I guess they can even equip Zahid without a land. Since it's legendary, so they can equip for three next turn. So the hope is that they do draw land and equip something other than Zahid, but that's not gonna happen, I don't think. So I guess we'll just even fire the sentry. Yep. Alright, so we're just dead on board, I think. I mean, even if we top decked Darigas here... If they give Zahid plus 6 plus 6, I guess we could have fallen to 1. 
And then if my next draw step was Helm of the Hosts, we could have still maybe won. Yeah, the sequence had to be top deck Darigas, my opponent doesn't have a land. So I can afford to take 11 from Zahid down to 1. Then draw the Helm so we can copy Darigas and Chumblock. So we still actually had an out there, I think. But yeah, we needed perfect top decks. All right, this looks great. They might have a counter here. Would rather get the Sapford counter than the Surveyor. And we have a land drop for next turn, so not necessarily in a hurry. Ooh, two headed giants. That's a scary card. Whenever I face this, it's essentially a four mana four four double strike, which hits pretty hard. So I'm tempted to just eviscerate while we can. Yeah, that's probably safer. Bounce token, that's fine. We've got all our late game cards in hand here, so we just need to make sure we can survive. Um, can syncopate this and then probably get a swamp. And we have Ancient Animus at the ready, but don't expect to need it. Ooh, Snapper. Well, if there's Snapper plus uh, Arcane Flights, I guess Darigas could still help. It's a little awkward. Land would have been so much better here, because then I could have also played Helm. But I probably could have played Elf so we can have access to Darigaz if we draw land or Urgros. Yep, there's Arcane Flights. And an Odalus. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Could skin witch first, but I don't think we have the time to. So probably gotta play Urgoros, which can hold off Atlas. At least that's the hope. And then we'll take five, hopefully, down to seven. Hope to draw land for Darigas. Take it from there. Ooh, Skizik. With kicker. Alright, so we're gonna take a bit of damage here. Take eight plus another one trample, nine. If I take nine down to three, let's say I do top deck, lands so I can play Darigas. I'll be at three life with Darigas, Urgoros, a lot more else is gonna be tapped, so I'll have two blockers. But then I'm still dead if they attack with everyone because I can go block, block, take three, and I die. So I probably have to trade, hope to draw land, play Darigas, and then I'm not necessarily dead. All right, it's the only play we can make. Oof, get to untap. I'm gonna need to get this helm in play as soon as possible to try and make some copies. So that's gonna be the first order of business. So we can play helm, keep up ancient animus. That's, I think, the most reasonable path forward. Can't helm equip. Uh, 
Do I need to skin which has an extra blocker on the ground? Alright, that's good. I think I hold the Ancient Animus. Let's see if we can make some double dragons. We can. Alright. I could maybe attack already. Because even if they do find an answer for Darigas, then... I'm still not dead, since I can Ancient Animus Adelis take 5. But maybe it's safer to wait a turn. Yeah, we'll wait a turn. The only concern is there a kicked fight with fire just burning me out, so that's why we should be somewhat aggressive still. Do I play Envoy or keep up Animus? I'll keep up Animus, I think. Alright, hopefully no kicked fight with fires in our future. Chronicler kicked. Okay. What does that get back? Opt. That's fine. Do I need to kill Adelis right now? Keeps card on top. Yeah, we could threaten lethal next turn, forcing them to jump with a snapper, so hopefully that happens. So I could Ancient Animus right now. And then untap, make another dragon, attack with all kicked wild onslaughts. So even if they block with the snapper, they might still die. This one isn't legendary, so it doesn't get a counter. But in case I did find a bounce spell, I would rather do this than have my actual Darigas bounced, I think. They did keep a card on top with the opts. Alright, and they did have a blink. Alright, so we're not gonna go for lethal now. Probably gotta wait a turn now. Before we make any attacks. I mean, this late game of Darigas is pretty difficult to beat, unless they have a fight with fire. Oof, and our opponent packs it in. Sweet. Well, this draft could not have been any better. Second pick to Darigas, got a late Helm of the Hosts, and yeah, got to play both cards quite often, and they carried us to victory multiple times. A lot of close games where we ended up at one or two life and managed to stabilize, so... Yeah, that was a fun one. And there's Slimefoot that we had to pass up on in the draft. I think I'm okay with that decision. Slimefoot, of course, has a great late game too, but I think we needed the Eviscerate more to get us to the point where we can cast our Darigas and leverage the Helm of the Host. And nice Mythic wild cards, and gearing up for uh, Theros here. Pack one, pick one. I mean, what's the best Mythic in the set? I guess the Fairy. Lyra Dawnbringer's good too. Varric's Bladewing. There's a lot of good Mythics. Moldrotha and um, Multani are both excellent too. But uh, probably want to stick to one of the one or two color Mythics that are easier to cast. And then. Uh, I mean, Throne Elemental and Barrage are both fine cards, too. But, uh, yeah, for now, I want to thank everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.